<clears throat> I have to get my notes. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back once again to Belmont Bunch. Today, talking about game five of the Islanders Flyers series. Flyers come out 4 3 in OT, second time in the series that they've had that exact result. But let's talk about the game. My voice might be shot. I'm not having any fun. Let's get to it. All right, so I'm going to go through my notes, my extensive notes on this game. Um, the Isles come out of the gate not playing fantastic. Uh, they do get a couple of blocks from Matt Martin. Uh, the first line has a decent shift, but Farley has to make a good stop on a Pelich giveaway. That was surprising. Um, Pelich had a couple giveaways early on. He would, you know, stow that uh, later into the game. Eberle and Lee had a two-on-one stopped. Um, hard to tell if it was actually stopped or shot over by Eberly. Eberly needs to start taking advantage. He's having a lot of scoring chances and, uh, not a lot to show for it in this series, at least. Um, I have 93, 93, 93, the announcers who have, Islander fans have had their issues with so far, Keith and Boosh. I like them a lot. Um, I've never really heard them call Islander flyer games. So I, I, you know, didn't really know that they would bring a little bit of homerism to it. I mean, you know, they did play for the team. I, I can understand how it could be a little bit tough. But at the same time, I went to broadcasting school, and I know how you have to be professional about that. Uh, so it felt that's why I wrote 93, 93, 93. It felt like that was the only thing they knew about the Islanders, uh, who Boosh is still surprised that Adam Pelich is good. So, yeah, uh, they don't really know much about the Islanders. Um, the Islanders survived the push. Um, Flyers come out, out shooting the Islanders, out shooting the Islanders five to two to start the game, uh, with, oh, with about 10 minutes left still. So I was going to power play at the eight minute mark, eight minutes remaining. Sorry. I keep doing that. Um, they came in two for seven on the series. Not terrible. They had issues, uh, entering the zone and basically pretty bad power play. Uh, Brock took a penalty to end the power play. Uh, bad calls on both. I think bad call on Philly um, to start the Islander power play. I believe it was a hold on Taves. It was a little bit light for playoff hockey. Ugh, voice crack. And then Nelson gets called for interference while playing the puck. So the referee's having a great game to start this one. Um, Flyers power play. They hit the post. Uh, Giroux is stopped by Varley. Rebound. Wide open net. Couture, uh, Couturier. Oh, Jesus. Uh, Couturier hits the post. Uh, their Islanders very fortunate to get out of that one. Islanders get a three on two and Pajo was stoned by Hart. Hart with a really aggressive play, not even really letting Pajo get a real shot off. And that's, uh, that's a good play from the 21 year old. Um, shots were nine, three Philly, uh, most of the way through the first Varley makes a big stop, uh, on Giroux in close on a weird funky bounce off the boards. Uh, Varley was, was pretty good tonight. It wasn't really, um, you know, his fault. For, for most of the goals. Uh, I was going to power play. Kalmarov is tripped at the very end of the period. And um, shots are 11-4 after one. Not ideal. Not a great period. Um, but when you're in an elimination game as the team trying to do the eliminating, nothing, nothing after one, you'll take it. Uh, Varley basically acted as the Islanders rock. Second period. Great power play movement even before the eventual goal by Josh Bailey. But it wasn't Josh Bailey, actually. It ends up after the game being credited to Matt Barzal, the one I'd wonder, uh, Barzal, who this one ends up being controversial, but, uh, to me, the refs actually get this one, right. Barzal is thrown into the net. Um, there are three flyers on top of him, not physically on top of him. So I don't want people to think that that's what I mean, but, um, you got a flyer player down in the crease blocking hard. And that ends up, I think being the reason that this goal is allowed, uh, basically, Barzal's in the crease, but he was pushed there, so that's tough on the first part. And then as he's trying to get out, it's very, very crowded in there. He's trying to get out, and to me, it's a good goal. Hart's not even looking at the right side of the goal when it goes in. Um, so, yeah, I thought that was a good goal on the ice. one nothing Islanders, and look at that, a power play goal. Um, they get a power play, obviously, after the replay is upheld. They start the period 4 four to nothing in shots. So decent puck movement on that power play. That doesn't come to anything. 
and uh, it's one nothing. But you're you're feeling pretty good. Uh, great stop again by Varley with the pad on Lawton. He kind of flipped out the the pad last second and was able to stop a tip. Uh, Hart stopped a a quick little brass uh, brassard shot, kind of similar to Lawton, just a little snapshot, and the goalie's standing tall in this one. Uh, Flyers had a really good push. Islanders had gotten the shots to 13-10, th uh, and now, of course, they were 11-4 after one, so good push. But then the Flyers took over the last five minutes of the second period. Uh, first, there was a great shift by the uh, the B's line, the Islanders' second line. Uh, Barzal, was, I felt, was playing a, two, a good two-way game. He had a, a good steal in that defensive zone in that sequence. Giroux ties it on a really, really good tip, and it's getting frustrating because the Islanders uh, are doing such a good job keeping it to the outside. And, you know, you can still score on those. This is how. Uh, the Isles got to get better with their, uh, you know, lifting sticks, getting body position on these guys, not just letting them walk free in the slot. And this will be a problem going forward in this game. Uh, so Taze gets a chance. Um, he gets a, a good passing play from Barzal. Barzal needs to shoot more, but he is creating some, some good uh, plays as well. Taze gets a shot. In close, gets a slapper off stop by Hart. And um, a little bit too much passing uh, after that. After they get that shot, they get the puck back, but then they pass a little too much. And they don't get another shot. Flyers go out of the zone. Eventually, bad p pinch by Pelch. Ooh, that's hard to say. Uh, and the Flyers score on a three-on-one. Um, yeah, what are you, you going to say other than bad pinch? And maybe you play a little more conservatively in a tie game, but uh, it's 2-1 Flyers at that point. Hayes almost scores from no angle after that. They go to review. They can't find it over the over the line. The uh, I have the ice tilted. Yeah, it tilted in the last five minutes. The Islanders uh, couldn't get out of the period with a tie game. Um, and it was tough. I was going to power play very early in the third. Uh, not getting pucks on that at all. Pretty terrible power play. So I don't think they had a shot on it. Pretty bad. Then Niskanen goes the other way. Slapper. And it's 3-1. And it felt like it was over. Um, there would be something that would wake the Islanders up, but felt like it was over, but the Islanders come back out with a good shift. That's just, so the over part was just my usual pessimism. Um, cause the Islanders come out and they play pretty well after that Flyers were blocking shots early on. It felt like the Isles were just chucking pucks at the net, but we're not like, we're not doing what Philly does. We're not getting, uh, those good tips on the slot. We're not getting, uh, you know, bodies in front, enough bodies in front. And it just felt like I'm a big soccer fan. Ah, oh, look at the shirt. I'm a big New York Red Bulls fan. And in the playoffs, the Red Bulls are known for going down by a goal in games that they should win and then just chucking the ball up the field constantly and not basically running out of game plan. And I felt like that was it early in the third, but Isles would eventually uh, um, kill Farabee. Sorry, Adam Pellich runs over um, Joel Farabee. This one, to me... Um, didn't seem like a, like a penalty. Uh, I, it, you know, maybe he'll get a fine. Um, but to me, it was a weird play where Farabee, uh, courageous play to get the puck out of the zone and risk the body. But to me, it kind of looked like he, um, jumps equally into the hit as much as Pelich does. Um, if I go back and watch the replay again, I don't know, maybe I'll see something else, but that's what I saw. And I saw it a bunch of times. Nelson scores. Less than five minutes left. Uh, Bailey gets into the zone. Nelson one times it off his pass. It's pretty far out for it to go in. And the announcers were, you know, Jones and Boosh. Boosh being a goalie, uh, especially, didn't seem very pleased with that one. And also being a former flyer. But um, maybe it, it could have gotten tipped. Um, but, you know, Hart looks like he got eaten up on that. Um, and, and just tried to shrug the shoulders into it. And it went over them and into the net. Uh, and... Isles finally dominating the game, I said. Hart stopped a, a one-timer from Letty. Uh, shots were 10-1 to 1 since the 3-1 goal at this point. And then, right after I texted my friends, I feel like a goal is coming. Islanders tie it. Fourth line gets to work with Broussard down there. I, I think Martin might have been in timeout mode uh, with a couple giveaways and a couple uh, bad plays in the game. And Broussard's out there with the fourth. And Broussard... My cat's meowing. Um, great play by Clutter. Great power move to the net. Just gets it on net. Um, 
And then Broussard goes around the net, taps it in, and we're tied. Uh, Isles take a bad icing with about a minute left. Then the Isles go the other way, get a bunch of chances. Lee can't find a wide-open Nicoletti right in front of the net. Uh, go back and watch that. It's just frustrating. Or don't, if you don't want to be frustrated as an Islander fan. To start OT, it was pond hockey. Uh, huge save by Varlamov on Hayes. Huge stop by uh, Hart on Taze. Then a gigantic stop on a one-on-one. -on -one, and I this if the Islanders lose the series, point to this play. Brock Nelson, springed in one-on-one -on -one by a great Beauvillier pass, gets stopped, tries to go five-hole. Uh, should have won the series right there. Uh, so the eventual controversy could have been stopped by this. Um, huge block by Pelic. Uh, Islanders were out blocking them 25 to 10 at that point. Uh, Isles were 7 to 1. Uh, shot, advantage, shot advantage in overtime. And then my handwriting just basically gives up. Um, first, there was a Martin trip. Um, it felt, to me, first look, it looked like the Flyers player took a second to go down. But bad play by Martin. Uh, it's an obvious offensive zone, you know, uh, little slash slash trip. Just not a good play. Don't even put yourself in the position for the refs to call it. Um, Flyers power play. I also got some good blocks and a good steal from uh, Andy Green. Martin, again, gave the puck away at the end of the power play. Martin, ugh, maybe Johnston comes in for game uh, six. We'll see. Uh, Martin not endearing himself to the coaching staff at the end of this game. Uh, the refs do not call a delay of game on Hart. Obviously, this is the one all over social media. Uh, this is a, just objectively the wrong call. Uh, it's in the rule book. The goalie outside of his crease can't just freeze the puck. Referee comes over and gives him a warning. Thanks for that. Thanks. That Good job doing your job. It didn't decide the game, but it's just so frustrating to watch that happen. Um, and it probably would mean that the Isles don't immediately lose it uh, because the Isles would have been on the power play for two minutes. And even if it was terrible, they probably don't allow the type of goal that they gave up where the Flyers, off a of bad icing by the Islanders, uh, the Flyers won the faceoff. They dominated in the faceoffs in this game. Were able to go to work, got the puck up top uh, to the point, shot, Deflected by Lawton in close, and it's a 4-3 win. So the notes go over there. Uh, so, yeah, uh, really, really, really tough one. Uh, if you're the Islanders, at least you could take out another two-goal, or another multi-goal comeback. Um, yeah, uh, Flyers win. Isles, Brock's got to score that before, you know, take, take it out of the ref's hands, basically. Score so the refs can't screw anything else up. Um, so, yeah. Uh, heart was big and not mine. Mine has shrunk. And uh, yeah, game six Thursday. I had the Islanders in six. Uh, it's just funny. Uh, I saw it on social media and stuff uh, that, you know, when you pick them in six, you, you feel that like, oh, yeah. And then you forget that that means you have to lose two games. And they have lost two very, very painful games because they have gotten your hopes all the way up and then lost it. So just remember that momentum doesn't mean much in a playoff format like we have this year uh, in the setting that we do. And also, I mean, look, uh, I was thinking after both Islander comebacks that there's no way they can lose this. They have all the momentum going in their direction. But both times, the Islanders just not doing a good job of clogging up the lanes and, um, yeah, just allowing shots from the point to tip in in close to Varlamov, not giving him a chance. So Islanders, we'll see uh, where they go in game six. Uh, lineup changes maybe, we'll see. Um but heartbreaker. And I had to uh, sleep on this one so I didn't like scream. Uh, and I think it did a good job. But uh, we'll see you on Thursday, uh, which means the video is probably going to come out on Friday. And uh, hopefully it's done after that because I can't, my heart can't take it anymore. And um, I, I can't have the announcers just repeatedly saying 1993. Mm -hmm. So, all right. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.